Hello everybody, what is up? Today we're going to continue looking at the Tesla screen Mark II. It's going to be just a general tour. We're going to go over some of the apps, some of the menus, so you can kind of get a feel for what you're going to be looking at in the unit. Now, hopefully this will answer some of your questions, but as always, if you have any other questions, feel free to drop them in the comment yeah. section below. We always appreciate likes on the videos and subscriptions to keep up with any new information coming out. Now, without further ado, let's hop right into it. So, the first thing that you're going to have up top is your navigation app. Now, for navigation, it's going to be an app that you set. You can pick your navigation. I have gone with Waze. It's been the most useful for me so far, so I've officially switched over from Google Maps. You can pick what you want. I have noticed that Waze is a little more stable on this unit than it was on the older unit. I'm sure that just has to do with a more up-to-date version. The next app is the music app. Now for the music app, you can't really edit it. I'm gonna go ahead and pause it because there's no real reason to, let's do it. But it comes on as soon as you hit the play button. It can't be defaulted to another music app, at least not at the moment. So you have this player. I prefer a different player. I use Power Amp, which I can show you in a minute. But you tap your music app, that's the one you're going to get. Your next app is going to be Phonely. Now it's up to you and how you want to use this. I personally don't, but for any of you who are looking for the Android Auto for the Apple CarPlay, this is your solution. You see, you can search by USB if you have it connected that way. You can do it by Wi Fi if you have an iPhone. You can mirror your phone right onto the screen. And by doing that, you'll be able to use your Android Autos, your Apple CarPlays, without having to pay for a separate module or anything of that nature. After that, you've got your Bluetooth. Now, this is the Bluetooth that comes with, not what I'm going for, though. I do want to get us an open Bluetooth stack. That's what I'm in the talks with them about now. But for this Bluetooth, what it is, is it's currently available for calls and music. So you can already do that from your phone. That much is no issue. You connect uh, simply by hitting Bluetooth devices, find what's in the area, connect, make your calls. That all works, that's no big deal. Auxiliary is another app that uh, I don't have any use for at the moment, but what it is for is if you do decide to go the aftermarket route, whether it be with your stereo or in this case for, uh, there is our inputs for video. So you can get an aftermarket 360 cam system. Uh, I know there are some people who have hooked up video game systems to the screen. So you can use your auxiliary for that. So that's your options there. Next, your Explorer. It's just a general Explorer. I've gone with Chrome, but if you just open that up, it's just a general internet Explorer type deal. Uh, so you can use that when browsing the web. Your console app, and I'm gonna go ahead and turn this down a little bit so I can show, but your console app is how you actually get all of the features that you had on your Q50 standard. Um, it's the bottom screen for your Q50. So all those features that you had, you'll still be able to access them here, uh, exact same way as you could. The touchscreen works like a touchscreen. You can switch to your radio if you want to listen to the radio. Choose your channels, XM. I don't have XM, so you're just going to have the preview channel, but same thing. It plays. Everything plays like normal. You still have all that same access, so that's not a big deal. That being stated, console's yeah. done. Your next app is going to be settings. You have a lot of settings you can go through. Uh, navigation is where you pick your app. GPS monitor, make sure that's working. Set your date and time. Your language. There's a mini equalizer here for you to work with. Screen brightness, system settings. There's definitely a few you can go through. Settings for your camera, DVR, reversing type. Uh, you can display the temp, wallpapers, TV modules if you have those sort of things. Basic stuff there. Now you have your wheel setting, that's the steering wheel controls. I did check on this and I wasn't able to edit anything. So I wouldn't say it has too much functionality on that. Uh, your system info screen is here. This is also how you access yeah. the secret menu by holding on this 7890. That takes you to the secret menu where you can get to a lot more system settings. Uh, wheel settings, volume, parking sounds, all sorts of fun stuff in here. I would heavily advise, if you're not advised to go in here by the manufacturer or when troubleshooting, don't go in here. Don't go touching anything because you don't know what everything does. 
and I don't want you breaking your unit. So if you're not advised to go in here, do not go in here. Now, hopping back out of here, you can also reset it if you need to. Again, not something I advise to do unless absolutely told. Your advanced settings, which I do not have the password for yet. You got a radio region. You don't need to really touch that. It works as is, so I don't see the point. Um, the touch key, which just has some details about different things it does. And your boot logo, where you can edit your boot logo if you want. You don't really see it often enough to, but it's there. Next is on to more settings. This is where you see your settings lined up, kind of how an ordinary tablet would be. For those of you who are worried about valet mode, so say you take the car in for service, you've got some important data on here, you don't want that getting out, you don't want people poking around in here, there's now a security option where you can hop in and set up your security as you choose. So you pick that, you guys can look at that how you want. Now that being said, all the other stuff, accessibility, about the device you guys know how that works if you've known android you already know how all this works you've got your app list here again i use the one that comes with the launcher i use i use car web guru but you do have an app window here just as well uh your dvr isn't really going to do much because there's nothing connected to it uh, that's again going to go with more of your auxiliary connection should you choose to you've got a file manager which is just ES File Manager. Uh, it pulls up like normally it would. You can go through your files, go through what's on here, what's on an SD card or a separate uh, USB that you might have stored. So everything there is simple, plain layout. And then of course you've got your camera, which as we've talked about, uh, yeah. I have upgraded to an HD backup camera. There's a video coming out on that soon but the camera app will run at all times. I just have the backup camera, so you just see rear, but if you have a round view camera, you'll have the option for all your round view cameras, and you can do that even while you're driving as shown in the last video. There was a question asked that I was supposed to get to that I did not, and I apologize for that, but it was relating, I believe, to uh, split screen. So let's get some apps to pull up here. So for split screen, kind of throw your apps where you want them and I haven't seen if camera will pull up on the bottom yet but let's give it a shot so yeah we can even pull up camera on the bottom and ways on the top yeah. and so there you go you can pull up your camera on the bottom you can have your ways running on the top or any combination of any apps that can run split screen you can split screen them just like that you just hold drag one to the top open your second on the bottom no big deal there and so there we go. That's just a general tour of some of the apps available and everything for the Tesla Mark II unit. That's how some of the things are gonna look. You've got your split screen functionality. Again, I'm working with them to try to get these bugs worked out so we can make sure that these things don't affect you when they come out. The main bugs we're seeing right now is that Bluetooth is still locked up and we're having the issue with the temperature. As you can see down here, if it'll focus in, it says 101. But if you actually look at the car's temperature, yeah. it's at 72. So it's 29 degrees off. I'm trying to have them fix those two issues because I feel like those will be the main two sticking points. At that point, the rest are just, you know, little bugs, nothing that would really bother you guys. So if we can get those two big things fixed, I feel like we'll be ready to ship. I'm gonna keep you guys updated. I'm working as hard and as fast as I can to get this done for you because I want you guys to experience this like I'm experiencing it. So stay tuned, please stay tuned, drop a subscription. I do not want you to miss out when this is ready for those additional units in the group buy. I want you guys to be able to get in on that. I do definitely thank you for staying by my side as always. Give me a like if you like the video, leave a comment if you have any question. Yeah. And as always, Right easy.